Hi everyone, I make Excel and PowerPoint templates to help people get ahead in their careers and get the most out of their organizations. This one in particular is a unified modeling language sequence diagram, which is absolutely fantastic when you're analyzing a system and the flow of information and even uh, how the code is designed potentially when there are uh, loops or packages that you need to work with in your code. But the best part is we'll be designing this in PowerPoint so you don't need to get any extra software in order to create a beautiful unified modeling language sequence diagram for your company or for your project. It's gonna be a whole bunch of fun. Let's get into it. Now, the first thing we do when we're creating a sequence diagram is actually starting with the class, the object, or the area that, we're, that the information is touching upon or flowing through. And we can just use a very simple square shape for this. Because we're going to add text to it, we just want to format that shape and the text options. And we just want to reduce the, the margins on this so that they don't overflow or wrap around when and we don't want them to. And then when we're editing the text, this is our class, object, or our area. Now we can take that and copy that across and just to give us a rough idea of what we're going to be working with. But we also want the customer and something to represent the customer. And to do that, we actually just want a little stick figure or a person, a shape of a person. And to do that, we're just going to do something very simple. And that is to take a normal line and we'll hold shift and make that a straight line. And we'll just uh, increase the size of that so that it's something that we can work with here. Then we're going to copy a few more of those shapes and we're just going to put them together so that uh, in the shape of a person. And finally, if we add a, uh, just a circle, nice round circle, if we hold shift while we're making that, then that will turn into a perfect circle and we can have uh, just a white fill and the same outline shape as the others. Now, if we select all of those together, right click, we can say group, and that's going to represent the customer that we're working with. And it also means that we can shrink that down uh, as one shape, which is really, really handy. And now that fits perfectly just over to the left. And this is important because all of the information will flow initially from our customer as it goes, as they uh, input all of that information and that information then flows through our system. In, in other words, the, the information will flow from top to bottom. So it'll start with the customer in the top left and go along to the right uh, and then down as it completes its journey. And the way we show the touch points on that journey is just with a simple straight line. So we're going to use a straight line and if we hold shift, that'll be like a, a nice straight line that we're looking for. Update the color to the ones that we want and just the size if we want to change that. But we really want this to be a dashed line and that's going to show the points, all the points of information uh, where our information can touch on for this particular class, object or area. Now let's pretend we're looking at a system and it, let's, it's going to be a one-time pin system. So you know when you log into some of your uh, things these days online, they might send you a one-time pin number to your mobile phone and then you use that to log into the system as well. So let's figure out and, and see what it would look like if it was flowing through uh, a process like that. Well, first of all, we might have the website screen where the customer enters their details. Now, second of all, that might flow through a customer database. Of course, it's going to have the one time pin generator. And then there might be an SMS sending service that we need to link in with as well for that information to throw, flow through so that that SMS can flow to our customer. They can input the one time pin and then log in from there. So now you can see we've got a rough layout of where this information is going to be going. For a normal information flow, what we want is just a normal arrow. And of course we can change that and sort of increase the size of that to suit. But with every item that we're going to be putting on our sequence diagram, we're just going to have a little text box as well to describe what it actually is. And we might have no outline here and uh, the text, we're just going to uh, change the margins in the same way as we changed the other ones too. So at first we're entering our email address. And, but then of course we do want something else. We're going to need to match the customer name and details. And we show that because that's next in line. So it's down a little bit further on our journey from start to finish, uh, but it's also going across uh, on the journey through our information flow. So that's gonna be matching customer name and details. And then from our customer database, what we might do is actually request the mobile number. Now here's where we can add another important part to our sequence diagram. And that is the time that, the, that each of these particular areas is active during our request. And to add that in, what we do is just add a simple square 
We just want the fill to be white so that, that's a, so that it blocks out everything else. And now for the, this is how long the website login screen is actually in use for. And so currently it's just being touched on across all of these areas. And so that's how, that's where we will keep that. And as, uh, as that increases, we can increase the active use indicator for the website login screen. We've got a similar, similar thing happening for our customer database at the moment, and so we'll just add that in. And now we've got two more very important parts of our sequence diagram, and that is an, an alternative or a, or a package scenario where we just want to group some of the code, and we've got an if-then-else statement, or an if, you know, if something happens, then something else happens. And to do that, we simply just want to add a normal, uh, a normal box shape or a square shape with no background, and so we can just copy one of our existing ones. And if we increase the size of that, that's going to go across all of our sections here. But we also want a little extra sec section, which is a, a, another dashed line. Uh, but I think we're just going to make this a little bit, uh, bit larger dashes here. And now we can actually uh, start labeling some of these things. So I think what we're going to do is just give this a bit of fill so that it bl blocks everything out as well. This is our alternative. If we select all of these things like the alternative and the extra items and if we right click and if we uh, group them together, that's what we want there. Now they're all grouped and now they'll move together and if we increase the size, they'll move together as well. But what is the if then else statement that we want here? Well, we want if customer details match. That's when we want the top part to happen. And if it doesn't match, so else, we want the bottom part to happen. So what are those things that we're looking at here? Well, let's grab a couple of our arrows. First one is going to go to our one-time pin generator. The next one we're going to do is request the SMS. And all of those are going to go back to the customer where we're wanting to send the pin number to the customer via SMS. The customer will input their pin into the website login screen here again. And if we have login success, then that's just going to end the series for us. Now we can increase the time that all of these parts are actually available or in use. As you can see, now they're in use uh, across all of these different sections here. And uh, we're going to have a little bit more time for this area for generating the one-time pin. And we're also going to have it for uh, requesting the SMS and sending the SMS from our SMS sending service. And as you can see, now it's really starting to take shape. Now lastly, of course, if they input the pin but, they, but it does not work. We just need to have that. So that's our else, our other scenario. If it doesn't work, we want an error message. And then we actually want to terminate the, uh, the information flow. And to do that, we're just going to create a, a little X using a normal outline, a nice dark outline there. We can increase the size of that a little bit. We will copy that across. And that is our X. And if we just select those two together, right click, we can group those. And now we have the end of our sequence uh, and our information flow and our sequence diagram. Now, really, really quickly, there are a few extra things and a few extra diagrams uh, and icons that you will use. As you can see, we've got them uh, all laid out here and you can also create these in, uh, in PowerPoint as well. So some of these icons are not directly a part of sequence diagrams, but you may come across them as well. You've got boundary icon here, an entity icon and control icon. So some people do uh, use those or throw them into the mix, but that's completely up to you. It's not always necessary. What you may see though is a self-validation message and the different other types of messaging. So synchronous message that can happen at the same time or asynchronous, which, uh, which only happens you know, on its own. So nothing, no other information flow is happening at the same time. And again, uh, and here's, you've got a return, a direct return message to that, to that particular item. So again, it really is up to you how you want to display all of this on your sequence diagram. If you do want to create uh, these icons, it's fairly simple. We just use the grouping method that we did uh, previously. The self-validation or the self-message or self-validation, um, for example, if SMS sending service was validating to itself um, before sending back is fairly easy to create. We'll just really just go to insert and shapes and we select a curved line. And if we just increase the size here, we, uh, we just click on all of the different points that we might have uh, here, 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 and here. And then press escape to finish. And as you can see there, we've got our curved line. If we format that, then we can actually add uh, an end arrow 
uh, an arrow to the end of that. And it's fairly easy to create, and that way you've got your return message or your self, oh sorry, your self validation or your self message. That's probably the main one that you'll come across. But all together, now you have created a sequence diagram in PowerPoint, and now you can showcase that to your team. I've really enjoyed spending the time creating this diagram with you today, and I hope you've enjoyed yourself as well. I'll see you in the next couple of videos, and bye for now.